Okay, Lynn, I, I want want to ask something here. Um, I, I heard you on an interview once, uh, and it doesn't sound like that you're too much for socialism, but mm -hmm. I, I venture to say that that's because a lot of the definitions that's attached to it. But do you think it's possible that someday we might see, because <clears throat> when you talk of capitalism, especially here in America, it, it's like our God. But the trouble <laughs> is with capitalism, it's based on, upon a financial institution that's based upon infinite growth. And infinite growth means infinite pillaging of our resources on a finite planet. So that in itself will determine that capitalism as we see it today will not work. It, it, in the long run, it simply will not work. Do you think we're going to evolve into something uh, hitherto unknown of, but a way to organize our society more socialistic and more with an even playing field to where money won't be such a, a big goal-orientated thing in our lives? Let's use some different language here because everybody's pretty frightened of the word socialism yes. in, um, in the U.S. Um, and I find this interesting because um, you know, the U.S. hasn't really experienced socialism. I live in the U.K., which has had some truly socialist policies, and they're trying to dismantle some of them, everything but the national health, which is both parties um, agree is a really good thing. And, um, you know, everybody in England loves the national health. It's very successful um, for what it is. You know, it's, th it's there and it's successful. But, so let's not use the word socialism, because socialism implies across the board sameness. Communism, across the board sameness. It, 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 it's odious to people because people believe that, um, that your individual efforts will not be rewarded, that that stuff will be taken away from you and put into a common pot. So I'm not really talking about that, because I don't believe in across the board sameness. I don't believe that we are all the same. I believe we're all one, we're all connected, but I don't believe that as aspects of that whole, we're all the same. And so I don't believe in removing incentive from people or reward for people who have provided more. But let's look at kinder models. For instance, let me give you an example. John Lewis, the partnership, is a department store chain in the UK. John Lewis at the turn of the 20th century uh, inherited his father's department store chain and hated the idea that most of the profits were going to faceless stockholders. And he felt that capitalism was good, but there were too many divisions between rich and poor, and everybody suffered as a result, which I'll get on to in a minute. So he decided to create of his department store chain a partnership, which meant that any profits go back to all of the employees. So although there's a differential in the salary between the CEO and the, stack sh the shelf stacker, when it comes to profits, each, everybody, including those two, will get a certain percentage of their salary. So it's the same percentage of their salary. Let's say they make a certain amount. It turns out to be the equivalent of 15% of everybody's salaries. Everybody gets 15% of their salary, whatever it is. What this does is it creates an all in it, we're all in this together mentality. When you have this kind of kindly capitalism, everybody works hard for the common collective. So during a crisis like the financial crisis, they all got together. You know, John Lewis had record profits because people said, well, it was tough, but we all work together. Now, obviously, in these areas, when we have a difficulty in finite resources, as you say, we need something more than benign capitalism. But we need that kind of model where everybody is being, in, everybody is involved. And so everybody determines what they're going to do. Now, the one other piece of that puzzle is everybody also determines what's good for the planet. Um, what I think business has to move toward and, you know, work of any sort has to move toward is a larger definition of self-interest now. And self-interest has to include the planet, the community, etc., in order to survive. So 
I am not for socialism, but I'm against the enormous unfairness that occurs in America these days. America is at the most unfair in its history. We've got 1% of the population controlling 40% of the money. Got 1% of the population whose income has gone up enormously to something like 25%, and the rest of the population, the rest of the 99, going down about the same amount. We've got 1% of the population being able to control and block a lot of the laws in America. And we've got 1 in 39 people in America who's a millionaire, but 39 million people who live below the poverty line, most of whom are on food stamps. That kind of inequity simply creates a disaster for everyone. The epidemiologists, the people who study populations, have looked at all Western countries, and they have found that when things are unfair like this, everybody suffers in all the social indicators, health care, education, violence and crime, mental health, you name it. And the, and the country, even though it's the wealthiest country in the world still, the country with the worst social indicators is the USA. So everybody loses. Everybody loses. Everybody gets the worst. We have, we have worse mortality statistics than Greece, the poorest country in the, U, in, in the EU, in the European Union. So everybody loses with that kind of situation. So we very much have to rethink this every man for himself kind of rugged, hands, fists raised against the masses kind of approach that we have in America to something much more kindly inclusive, but not necessarily across the board same. Yeah, I, I hear people say here that our government is broken. It, it's not broken. We don't even have a government. We have corporate agendas and all of our decisions are being made according to those corporate agendas. So actually the government is working exactly how they want it to work. So I, I think we need to go in and <clears throat> reevaluate what we're calling government and what we're calling corporations because corporations have actually taken over. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what's that's what's really scary about things is that government is not being is not being really a body that is voting for the public good based on a certain bunch of beliefs. Um, government is now being uh, is now voting according to who is paying the ticket and who's paying the check, and you know people are voting. Those people in power are voting in order to stay in power, and they stay in power by being supported by these lobbying groups. So, the worrying thing is that the people with who are in the one percent, um, and I'm quoting this one percent because uh, Joseph Stieg, that's the Nobel Prize economist just wrote about some of these figures and he said that which was quite scary the statistics now in the US are such that they mirror those of those countries that have had revolutions in the Middle East so what he's saying is that we're a powder keg and we're about to blow so I think that you know for the good of the country for the good of the uh, for the good of the um, the globe we must rethink our philosophies you know we've um, you know, we're, we're getting this from other countries now. I mean, there was an interesting documentary recently um, looking at the Ayn Rand philosophy, the idea that, you know, living for selfish interests is the only way for a society. That was basically what she believed. And she believed that you should not believe, live for anyone, that altruism must be destroyed, that people must embrace self-interest. That mindset is just blowing up in our faces. China, which is now pulling the strings on the vast debt that America owes, is basically saying to us, as this, as this show said, you want to see what greed's like? We'll show you. We'll show you what you guys have been doing. Here you go. You know, finger raised. So I think we are at a point where this mindset has to change. And we're really at the sharp end here in America. So we have to really come up with some new definitions of how we're going to create wealth and create create plenty for all and we can do that coming up with a different model a different model that still ha you know embraces enterprise etc but not at all costs 
So, Lynn, since it's 2011, I don't think any interview would be a real interview unless I asked the question. What do you think about 2012? Well, I don't think it's the beginning of the end of the world. I think it's the beginning of new consciousness. I mean, there's a lot of interesting geomagnetic effects occurring around this time. And from what I'm gathering, although I'm, I'm not a student of it, the Mayans never meant it was the end of the world. They meant it was the end of, an, of, an, of one way of life and the beginning of a new way of life. I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing a flowering of consciousness. I think it's a very exciting time. I think we're getting, we're, we know that we've reached the end of something. We all know this. We're trying to put our finger on it. Our pundits are trying to put a, our, their fingers on it. So they have said variously to all of the crises that we're facing, well, it must mean it's the end of capitalism as we know it, or it's the end of oil and our use of foreign oil, or it's the end of food because it's the end of oil, or it's the end of the world. But I think it's just the end of this false sense of who we are. It's the end of this sense of us as separate and competitive beings and the flowering of something much more connected. And so what we really have to do is start understanding that that old mindset is going to destroy us. And so it will never go back to what it was before. It must move forward for us to survive. I also think we are the most important generation that's ever lived because our decisions are going to affect not only our children's children, but people for all time. And so we have a choice. We can follow the kind of path of atomization, of ring fencing things according to more, more and more minor differences. That's where we are at the moment. We can polarize more and more and more, or we can embrace the opposite impulse. And I very much in the bond am an advocate and hopefully a signposter of how to embrace the opposite impulse. Yeah, I, I do believe it's it's the end of an age, and even in the, the biblical text where it says the end of the world, they misinterpreted the Hebrew word because it actually says the end of an age, and words like apocalypse actually means a lifting of the veil, and I think if we can just see this as a, an end of an age, thank goodness, and a lifting of the veil so we can see into the more etheric fields, we're going to see a, a new world open up before us. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I think we just have to see with a different pair of eyes. We have to learn to look a lot wider, and we need to we need to understand and embrace that we have to change the way we we see the world to see wholeness. We have to change the way we relate to the world so that we connect above anything else. We have to start clustering in a different way so that we honor difference as part of the whole. And then we have to change our purpose. So it's not about just what's in it for me, but also how can I serve? But how can I serve everything all the time? So that putting that into making the bond as your daily activity um, is really, I think, the only way forward. I think it, anything else is really simply a continuation continuation of the old. Well, like I heard you say on a, an inter interview once, we're, we're all doing our part in looking at this from different perspectives. And I think your book is a, an important part of this puzzle that we're trying to put together here to see a new world, a new vision, a, a new mythology. And that's going to require uh, something called meditation, and that's something that people just don't do enough of. But I think as we go along and we keep putting out the information, uh, th this is what it's going to take. So is there anything you'd like to say in closing? <laughs>